this really interesting video that popped up on the Tiger Belly subreddit. Definitely check that out, right? Tiger Belly, um, great podcast um, with Bobby Lee and Michaela and uh, what was his name? George, the producer. Definitely check that out. He's of course you've got another podcast as well called Bad Friends of Andrew Santino, and you know just generally a good egg in the sort of like LA based podcast and comedy circle. This video popped up on a subreddit of Eric Griffin, another guy in that crew. Um, who was essentially complaining about this recent, you know, I don't know, it seems like maybe because of lockdown and because of the, you know, changing world economy and stuff and, you know, the nature of live events or the arts and entertainment has been forth, flipped on his head. People are maybe reassessing where they sit, right, in terms of the, yeah, where you sit in the overall schism of stuff, right? Where where do you sit? Yeah, where's your position on the totem pole? Even totem pole's not the right word to say. It's sort of, yeah, maybe it's totem pole. Because it's not necessarily, you're not really aiming, you're not really getting up to go anywhere because there's only one, there's only a couple spots at the top, right? For the Kevin Hart and Dave Chappelle's. It seems like in every industry, there's like a couple of top spots that are available. But it seems like within the arts, everyone's sort of figuring out where they sit, where they stand, where their career is in general. Because they're looking and they're thinking, okay, especially the ones that don't have, that didn't have anything going on the side, um, that they could do via laptop such as a podcast or such as a twitch channel whatever it may be or a popping instagram profile they're starting to try and to they're starting to see where they sit because there's people that were doing that stuff regularly on the side and they're also hustling making you know they're also producing shows on you know tv and all that stuff and doing stand-up in as their day as their kind of bread and butter but they were doing you know internet stuff on the side so they're now realizing that, oh, I might be a little bit ahead of this person because they're just relying on shows to get forward. But there's also that kind of, it seems like just there's a realization now because everyone's at home that maybe you are not where you think you are in your actual community or peer group of friends that you kind of hang out with. And again, it's a rough realization to go through because I, I feel for Eric Griffin because I had to, I've, I've been through a couple of them um in various scenes i'd say uh, maybe maybe say the kind of east london promoter scene place right the cool kind of hipster guy scene and i'd probably say the other one was the other one was the streetwear sort of fashioning streetwear yeah the early streetwear sort of days was a good example of that too two areas where i was possibly at the forefront i was one of the, the first couple of people involved in it right but I also didn't make the transition or I didn't maybe make the right connections, the right little network steps. And I wasn't just liked in those certain areas that allowed me to progress forward. So then you have to decide what you're going to do. Are you going to keep chasing those people that are kind of getting a bit f further ahead than you? Or are you going to just try and carve your own way? This is only if you're interested to stay in the scene, of course. If you don't interested, hang your coat up and carry on moving. But if you want to get forward and those guys are kind of pushed away from you, whether it's be because of circumstances, right? Some people just get, imagine, you're both interning somewhere, you get a job, no, you're both interning somewhere and suddenly that person outperforms you and they suddenly get offered a permanent role within the first six months but you're still interning. It's natural there'll be a bit of a separation, right? They might feel as if like they want to talk to the, you know, the actual contractor staff and not the freelancers. It, it kind of happens sometimes like that. Um, or just somebody's just lucky and they kind of sneak in through the back door and they come in first job assisting instead of, you know, maybe helping out, you know, making contact sheets. They actually be a, end up being a photographer assistant. So it can just be different pathways in. But I think with the internet, personally, in my opinion, I think that is a, it's, it's a bitter pill to swallow. It's hard, but I think it's, it's, a, it's, ma it's made easier because of the internet. Because before, if that happened to you and you got chucked out of your peer group, it essentially felt like you've been ostracized by your own village, right? It felt as if, why is the point of life continuing if you are not able to sort of be in the same company as your peer group? But with the internet and with social media, you're able to sort of like carve your own little, you know, your own little scene, your own little micro scene within a scene um, that you can sort of band your friends around and uh, that can sort of like elevate your platform, magnify your voice. Um, it's all those kind of good things. And I thought this video was sort of heartbreaking because essentially Eric Griffin has sort of like never come to a realization. Maybe it's part of his personality. He's just always been that kind of guy who always feels as if um, his friends don't necessarily always include him in stuff. But I think you just have to accept sometimes that you just sit in a different category 
than what you think you do amongst your friends who you probably think you're in the same group as it's very hard to swallow but i think it's very important in terms of understanding what's going on especially in the arts culture in general how to move forward how to navigate this weird uh, moment in time when at the moment i'm gonna load up for you now to view it's just loading and there we go it's about six minutes won't watch the whole thing but i'll just give you i think the first couple of minutes give you a good indication of ways minds at i mean it is what it is you know everybody's doing what they doing now i get it i'd stream too you know what i mean like i get like rammy's doing it right he he, he quickly started a youtube page and put all those videos on youtube because you guys watch them you know if bobby's on a video people watch him i get it because i do the same thing you know so it is what it is you know so they do innate thing and you know i i have i've been excluded they, they don't they don't want me in there if they did i'd be there so that's 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 the end of it and i guess Obviously, at the moment, or if you're not watching via the screen, he's playing. I think was a, it was a Call of Duty was a, um, From what I've read, it's it's mostly a gaming thing, but I do think a lot of it stems from the fact that he was never given the opportunity to do the Bad Friend show with Bobby Lee. It was essentially like you know, it seemed like that would make more sense, right? Eric Griffin and Bobby Lee had this weird, fractious relationship where Eric Griffin feels that Bobby Lee's his best friend. Bobby Lee's not very, you know. He doesn't, I don't know, he's not the most um, emotionally receptive person when it comes to people maybe reaching out to him and stuff and he maybe pushes him away naturally. Um, it then comes to a point where, you know, he wants to make a, he do another show outside of what he does with Tiger Belly. Bad Friends is like a really great concept. This idea that, you know, the two uh, friends that love each other, hate each other at the same time, continue to sort of take the piss out of each other. And in terms of a dynamic, it, it would work pretty well with Eric Griffin and Bobby Lee because there would be some real tender moments in there and some real general frustration frustrations about how Bobby Lee is to be a friend to how is being a friend of Bobby Lee's but I guess because of ratings I guess because Andrew Santino's profile is higher maybe because Andrew Santino is a more proficient person in terms of putting a show together he might have more credits whatever it may be right something that doesn't mean it doesn't necessarily mean Bobby thinks Andrew Santino's a better friend than him it just means in that kind of um platform in that on that yeah, in that instant, when it comes to producing a podcast show, this guy is just better for what I need. And it's just, a, again, it's a hard put to swallow. It really is because you think you're all at the same level, but sometimes you're not. Sometimes you can't see the level that they're on because you all happen to be friends. And I think that's the issue sometimes because that's an underestimated issue people don't talk about a lot with having successful friends. It's all well and good having friends that are successful and are doing great things in the area that you want to be involved in, right? Whether it be fashion, music, DJ and you know bloody whatever right law firm it doesn't matter it's all well and good having them but sometimes it can skew your idea of where you are in your career or it can give you a maybe it can give you a sort of overinflated sense of self and it's happened to me plenty of times where you sort of think because you are standing next to her and him or because you happen to be friendly with this guy that it somehow puts you within their same sphere and you're not because they're operators you are merely somebody trying to find their feet right they've got a lot of skin in the game they've got experience they've got a cloud they've got this they've got whatever they have they just have that extra bit that you're not seeing because you're just seeing it as a sort of like a binary we are the same age we went to the same school we did the same it's some success and sometimes these sort especially in entertainment there's so many other things apart from just a binary man girl black white 22 22 thing it's a lot more it's a lot more nuanced than that your life is generally like that and i guess eric griffin just hasn't discovered it and again the other point of this which goes back to my crystal ear point is that you live in la the la comedy scene by all tense purposes from what we've seen with the crystal ear situation it isn't a place where you naturally go and say okay i've made some real friends here I think they've got a lot of people that they know that they're close with, but I don't think you'd ever say any of those guys are real friends because the moment a controversy comes along, the moment you get involved in some sort of scandal, which you will, especially if you're a comedian, 
you're saying a lot of words you're in a lot of podcasts you're putting yourself front and center to give your opinion you have to be a sort of you ha you have to sign up to be a contrarian by the very you know unless you're a boring comedian by its very intents and purposes you are paid to look at the world via a different sort of lens so you're gonna you're bound to slip up or anger some people along your way and you have to also know that you might say the wrong thing. You might overstep the line so bad that the entire, if it will feel like the entire, the entirety of society just says, no, you're no more, you're cancelled. And you have to realise that those friends of yours that you had in comedy aren't your friends anymore because they don't want to be cancelled with you. It's equivalent to when you get fired at work and everyone knows and no one wants to talk to you and you have to kind of like leave awkwardly. You know? <laughs> right? That's what happens in, in LA. It's the same thing when you get cancelled. Like, no one wants to give you eye contact. No one wants to touch you. They don't want to get that sort of, like, sacked, fired stink all over themselves. They don't want to get a talking to later either. No one wants that. They might talk to you later. They might give you a little text message or send you something on Facebook or Instagram. But talk to you in person, at, like, face-to-face? -face, or be seen with you in a workplace? No. And I think it's a bit, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's naive because I don't think that's fair. I just think it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an unfortunate character trait to have when you're in LA to be as warm and open and as friendly and as willing to share your love and being in a friendship relationship with people close one it can sometimes really bite you in the ass especially in scenes like this where essentially people are kind of grading their friendships based on what they can offer right and I've been in that position myself that kind of cool London sort of scene whether it be in the music or fashion is very much like that people kind of align themselves to people who they can maybe get something from right if you post a picture with this girl you get this man that likes it's sick it's disgusting but it is what it is right and you have to know that that is part of the game so you don't you shouldn't be angered when you go out with these said people they come back home and upload pictures of themselves and you happen to be cropped out it is the game what can you do carry a little bit more I'm not salty about it, though, by the way, but I am a little bit like, oh, that sucks because I thought, you know, I thought I had friends, you know, you know, I thought it was like, but it's obviously not. You know what I mean? It's like it's it, 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 it you can't help but feel fucked up about it if you were in my position. Of course, you can't help but feel that, but you have to understand as well, they're not your friends. That's the issue you had. The moment you can, I think people listen to everyone. The moment you can start looking at things, and I guess, because I don't know. And again, I'm the worst person to say this because I don't really have many friends. I, I tend to keep myself quite close off. But I would imagine your actual, actual friends are people that have known you for a long period of time. People that can maybe talk to you in a way that other people can't talk to you. People that maybe, um, I don't know, you have this connection that doesn't necessarily it's not as surface as you happen to be in the same sort of field of work. It's an actual, you know, friendship, kinship that you've built over the years. So to confuse that with knowing somebody that you work with really well or maybe hanging out with them after in a bar, to confuse that with friendship is, I don't know, it's really dumb, I think, in my opinion. Especially in LA, especially in any kind of small scene, I think you should never think that. Like, if you're in a DIY indie scene, right, you're trying to set up a band and you think everyone that you're meeting in that scene is your friend, you're also, you know, you're also a little bit naive in that respect because they're not. Especially if you're not winning or if you're not essentially pushing things in your lane or getting places where you want to, you're not really going to make any new friends because, you know, no one really wants to be near you because you stink because you're not got you know you not become successful in the time period they have or because you haven't got a certain show whatever it may be and it happens often and i just think um for all the gifts that those little micro scenes can give you in terms of access and platform and proximity right because you know the fact that he's in la is a great thing anyway right you get to work in a comedy store a place where everyone thinks is the world's best comedy club um it's great but you just take it for what it is a platform for you to tell jokes in front of a captive audience amongst some of your best some of the best peers in your industry you know because that's what comedians want you know the validation of other comedians and you should just kind of keep it moving if you happen to find somebody that you can um say that okay this person is gonna be my best man at my wedding that's incredible but you should really be thinking about people back home who 
you know you've really grown up with or people that you've been on the road with people you've been in the trench with people that you started open mics with that sh those people should be maybe your your friends but la comedians la people the ones that you know chris alia is a good example chris alia gets everyone ratings right every podcast chris alia goes on is like minimum what hundred thousand views on youtube minimum right he's a hot ticket um people bring him on their shows all the time find a kid bloody rinse the um chris alia absolutely rinse it before he started his own podcast and then he gets in some trouble again admittedly it's a serious accusation right he was basically as accused of you know having um sexual relations with underage girls or tr attempting to in some regards but it kind of transpires quite quickly that that wasn't the case they don't back him they don't defend him in public and so they start crying they start distancing themselves deleting pictures and stuff so to expect those people to be loyal to you as a friend in terms of playing computer games or setting up podcast shows is really 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 naive because at least with chris Alia, he's got you know he's got numbers to back him up he's got a cookie cutter image cookie cutter sort of image right is that the way term he's got a netflix special uh he's in netflix shows right so he's an he's the actual person you should be attempting to like bend over backwards for right making all kind of excuses for him but they didn't they still didn't want to do that even to him so if they can do that to him you should really expect if you're an eric griffin or somebody on that level you should expect worse right you should expect them to drop you like a hot potato if you, your picture doesn't get a certain amount of likes on instagram I don't know, man. I just thought it was interesting to kind of look at as just as a kind of byproduct of, as no, but another sort of representation of how you should maneuver in different sub micro cultures, micro subcultures, whatever they may be, right? How you should how you should navigate and knowing where you actually sit and being all right with that too, being being okay with being like the, you know, the cool friend that kind of adds to the party instead of being one of the mainstays even though your experience tells you you should be i think that should be the way forward so again i feel sorry for eric griffin i still think he's a super funny guy i think riffin griffin is one of my favorite podcasts actually i think it's really really um interesting podcast he's really introspective really kind open dude i think his appearances on the rick glassman show are really cool as well definitely check him out on there and just generally has a good egg but I think he's being a bit naive when it comes to expecting LA people to be your actual friends, friends. That's like a little bit, a little bit naive in my experience from what I've seen anyway online.